Hello everyone. Welcome to my channel, Economics Simplified. My name is Miss Ellen, an economics tutor. The purpose of my channel is to help students gain interest in economics and also make the subject very simple for you to understand. What I want you to do is you subscribe to my channel, you like, you share, and you leave a comment. To begin with, we look at the nature and scope of economics. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to explain economics. Now, the big question is, what is economics? What is economics? Many authorities have tried explaining economics. One of them is Adam Smith who happens to be the father of economics. He defines economics as an inquiry into the nature and causes of wealth of nation. Another is Alfred Marshall. He also defines economics as the study of mankind in the ordinary businesses of life. We also have J.S. Mills. He also defines economics as the practical science of production and distribution of wealth. We also have that of Lionel Robbins. He also defines economics as a science that studies human behavior as a relationship between ends and scarce means that have alternative uses. Now, for the sake of academics, if you are asked to define um, economics or explain economics, we use that of Lionel Rubin's definition. Let's move on. We, we are taking his definition, we break it down, um, try to explain certain concepts in his definition. Now, the first is economics as a science. Economics is considered as a science because it uses scientific procedures or methods in explaining analysis or issues. It is also considered as a science because economic behaviors obey certain laws. So laws such as the law of demand, the law of supply, what have you. Economics is not a pure science like that of the biology, chemistry, physics, but it is a social science. Economics is a social science because it studies human behavior. In other words, the subject matter is human beings. Let's move on. Now, let's explain the scientific method or procedures that qualifies economics to also be considered as a science subject. The first is observation of a phenomenon or a situation. Observation of a phenomenon or a situation. When we talk about observation of a phenomenon, let's assume we want to make a research on how um, that is the effect of an increase or a change in price on both consumers and then suppliers. Unlike that of the biology, the physics, the chemistry, where they go to um, a lab or they have a laboratory. Economics, we don't have anything called a laboratory. Our lab, it's mostly where we have consumers and then suppliers or producers interacting. So we can take an example that is um, that of the market. Now, we want to observe how consumers and then suppliers um, react to price changes. When we take that of the consumer, we want to see how consumers react when there is an increase in price, how would they purchase goods and services? Then in terms of suppliers, how would they also react to an increase in supply? Would they supply more or they will supply less? In terms of when there is a reduction in price, we want to observe how consumers will react to an increase in price. Would they um, demand more or would they demand less? So the observation of the phenomenon is all about um, studying the consumer and then the producer or the supplier in terms of a change or an increase in the price of the um, goods and services. Then we move to the next scientific method, which is known as data collection about some phenomenon. 
what this talks about is after your observation of um how consumers and then producers react or behave towards i am um, a change in price then you try collecting data example if there is an increase in price what quantity of goods and services will the consumer purchase in terms of the supplier if there is an increase in the price of goods and services what quantity would they also sell out would they sell less or do sell more if it's the consumer is the consumer um, buying more or is the consumer buying less for example if there is an increase in price say 100 ghana city the consumer purchases 50 units another instance is if the price increases from the um, from the 100 ghana to let's say 200 ghana city the um, quantity demanded will reduce to let's say two units that is for the consumer then that of the supplier we assume that if the price of the commodity say 150 ghana city and then the quantity supplied at 100 units when price reduces to let's say 100 cd the quantity supplied will also reduce to 50 units so that is the quantity demanded and then quantity supplied in terms of the data you have collected based on the observation of the phenomenon or a situation so that is the second um, scientific method then we move to the third which is organization of the data with this based on the collection of your data you try to organize your data in order to um, see if you can conclude on a pattern or a trend in terms of if there is an increase in price would the consumer in other words if there is an increase in price or an increase in price led to a less quantity demanded then a decrease in price led to a more quantity demanded in terms of supply when the price of the commodity was high they supplied more then when price reduces they supply less so that is the pattern you've been able to discover um, based on the collection of data then we move to the fourth which is generalization based on the pattern observed now after you are able to um, come out with a pattern or a trend the next thing is you come out with law or um, formulation of law now based on the pattern we're able to come out with the law of demand or the law of supply now with the law of demand it states that all other things being equal the higher the price of the commodity the lower the quantity demanded and the lower the price of the commodity the higher the quantity demanded in terms of the law of supply that is all other things being equal the higher the price of the commodity the higher the quantity demanded and the lower the price of the commodity the lower the quantity supplied that is for the generalization based on the pattern discovered then we move to the final scientific method which is known as predictions on the basis of the theory or generalization with this we are able to predict um, the demand curve or the supply curve based on the theory or the generalization we've been able to um, formulate now we are able to predict that the demand curve will be a downward sloping curve meaning that when price is high the quantity demanded will be low and when price is low the quantity demanded will be um, will be high then that of the supply curve we are able to predict that based on the law we've been able to formulate the curve for um supply will be an upward sloping curve meaning that at a higher price quantity supplied will also be high and then at a lower price quantity supplied will also be low so that is our prediction let's move on then we talk about human behavior remember we are explaining 
um, economics, as, um, that is what um, economics. We said economics is a science which studies human behavior. So let's try and then explain what human behavior is. With human behavior, we are referring to human beings or human institutions. Now in every institution or in every society or in every economy, we have what we call human agents. Now we have three types of human agents in every institution or um, every society. These are, we have individuals or households. Then the second it's firms or businesses. Then thirdly, we have that of government um, agents. The economics tries to um, explain or, um, yeah, that is try to explain how the individuals or the household spend their resources or how the individual is able to utilize their resources efficiently in terms of how to um, spend their money, how efficient the individual is able to um, use their upkeep. Then that of the firm or the businesses, how do they um, use their resources um, efficiently in order to produce goods and services? So in terms of um, capital, how is the firm able to utilize that, their capital or their money or their um, input? Then with that of the government, the economics will also try to study how government uses um, their resources efficiently in order to produce so that everybody in the country can have a share of the national cake. Um, because of time, we wouldn't be able to um, explain everything. So I will leave that for my next video. That will be the part two of what we've done so far. As I said, please subscribe to the channel Economics Simplified. Make sure you share, you like, and then you leave a comment. Thanks so much. Have a great time.